Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another video. So, the first all virtual NAM is done. Most of the 2021 lineups have been revealed. I'm kind of bored of waiting for Schechter. So now that we've had a week to reflect and kind of process everything that's been revealed, I think it's time to finally wrap things up with a final tier list. Well, kind of final. Basically, this is going to be more of like a hype ranking coming out of the January period with the global guitar production situation being beyond max capacity and most brands still trying to catch up with orders of last year's models. I don't think anyone has revealed everything they want to. And in some cases, it was more obvious than in others. <laughs> I fully expect there to be more staggered releases over the course of this year, kind of like what Schechter was doing in 2020. It seems like they were dropping new series every month, like the Blood Mountains, the relaunch Blackjacks, and like what Solar's been doing since Ola launched the company. But yeah, let's look at the major brands and look how they fared coming out of NAMM, or Believe in Music Week, or whatever they called it. So S tier is incredible, massive hype, D being underwhelming, and hopefully there will be more interesting releases at Summer Nam or during the course of 2021. Let's start with Fender. So Fender introduced their super high-end American Ultra Luxe series with stainless steel frets. Pretty much what the American Ultra series should have been last year, in my opinion. <laughs> but this new launch has a silver burst strat with a Floyd. They also have the Noventa series. And huge shout out to my Spanish-speaking viewers who pointed out that Noventa means 90 in Spanish. Great name for a line of P90 crazy guitars. And they've got the 123 theme with the Tele, Strat, and Jazzmaster. I am very interested in both the series, so I'm gonna go ahead and give them an A. Fender is one of the big two iconic American brands, so for them to be adding stainless steel frets, which I personally think is a massive upgrade in terms of feel, is huge. And now that they've added it to regular production models, granted, even though it's at the very top of the line, it's at least still there. The seal has been broken, so that's super exciting because eventually it'll start making its way down to the more affordable Fender models. A tier for me. Now let's stay in the Fender family, Squire. Squire f***ing brought it this year. Contemporary series sub $500 guitars with roasted maple necks. Any way you cut it, that's insane for a major brand with world-class global distribution. Yes, you can get Harley Bentons with roasted maple necks for less, but no, you do not see Harley Bentons hanging on the walls of stores across the world for anyone to try. Squires bring affordable roasted maple to local stores across the globe. That is a game changer. Plus the Strat Special looks like an incredible candidate to throw in two single sized humbuckers for four cool chugs. Easy S tier for me. I'm a fan of anything that really pushes the industry and benefits guitarists across the board. Offering what used to be a custom shop only option just a few years ago in a budget line of guitars is going to pressure everyone else to keep up. Don't be surprised if you see a lot more roasted maple in 500-ish dollar guitars next year because of this move. Uh, Charvel next, I guess? I'll be honest, I don't really remember what Charvel did. They had the cool new basses with roasted maple necks and fingerboards. Oh, they had the Sassafras Black Metal-esque series. Nothing huge though? Nothing with the excitement of the Shell Pink TK24 HSS or Gojira Joe's signature model from last year. And yes, I call him Gojira Joe because French is hard and I don't want to butcher his last name. I guess I'm gonna go C tier with Charvel because it wasn't awful. There were still a couple of cool new models, just nothing that was super memorable or that screams must try to me. Jackson, what did Jackson do? They've got the new Misha Strat, which is kind of outrageously expensive, but still cool that they're going back to Japan. On the Pro Series, they've got the Cracked Mirror Marty Friedman, all the crackled finished guitars the mirror soloist. They've got a guitar for $2.99 with a roasted maple neck and fingerboard, which for some reason they haven't been advertising the absolute sh** out of. I do not know why, I totally would. I'm going with B tier, I guess. The reason being, yes, they had a ton of new models. Like out of all the Fender family brands, they easily have the most new reveals. I just think, speaking as a non-Jackson fanboy, much to the chagrin of the salty Jackson defense force in the comments, there's nothing there that's super tempting for non-believers. And I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing. They know who their audience is, and this is probably a really exciting time if you're already a Jackson fan. But if you're not, a couple that are nice but don't necessarily need to try. B tier. EVH. They have the new 5150 series, Wolfgang QM with baked maple necks and fingerboard. You may as well count the Stripe series Frankie 
as a new release since last year, they were like impossible to get. I'm gonna go with C, no, maybe B tier, like C plus maybe. I like the new finishes a lot and the big red kill switch button on the 5150s. I think this year, understandably, we didn't see a lot from EVH because RIP the GOAT and EVH is not a huge operation compared to Jackson and Charvel. The next couple of years are really gonna define EVH as a company, so it'll be real interesting to watch. This year, yeah, I guess B tier. Nothing massively groundbreaking, but it is hard to judge them because they are so much smaller. Honestly, I am more interested in trying the new EVHs than I am the new Charvels. Yeah, f yeah. it. It's not like this list has any lasting ramifications. It's just an opinion piece on hype. B tier. Let's do Dean next. Uh, what did I like from Dean? The Leslie West Age Tribute model looks amazing. I will never own it because it's so expensive. Multi scales look interesting. Fish from Fluence finally making it into Dean guitars. I guess I'll go B tier as well. A lot of models I'd be interested in trying out, but no strong desire to own any. Uh, at least for now. Yeah, B tier seems about right. LTD up next. S tier. I don't even care. Again, it's because we have another industry game changer. They're bringing stainless steel frets to all their 1000 series or equivalent guitars. That means the black metal series. That means the signature models. That means stainless steel frets on standard production models priced in or around a thousand dollars. Yes, you don't need stainless steel frets, but they feel so much better. And again, that used to be such a high-end feature. This move by a massive brand sold at dealers around the world is going to push the industry. Easy, easy S tier. Then ESP. I'm lumping together ESP USA and E2, like the higher end brands. ESP USA got new finishes, E2 at like one or two new models, but mostly new finishes as well. If I remember correctly, I'm tempted to go with A tier because I love Eclipses so much. If we're being honest though, E2 not having stainless steel frets when both LTD and ESP USA does is very disappointing from an American consumer perspective, especially when ESP has consistently promoted itself as a modern brand. I feel bad that E2 is bringing ESP USA down because that gold spatter finish does look fire, but yeah, I'm giving ESP a D tier. The new finishes are all right, the lineups are nothing groundbreaking, and it's missing one of the most anticipated features a lot of us ESP fans have been waiting and hoping for. It pains me because I love ESP, but we move. Oh, I forgot about Gretsch. So I know nothing about Gretsch. I took a gander at the new for 2021 page. I honestly don't really know what I'm looking at, but they have a new 30 inch baritone in silver with a Bigsby for 649 and I need to try it. Based on that one model alone, A tier. Yeah. This list is going to yeah. shit. We move. Let's go with Gibson next. Gibson did basically nothing with their core lineup, but there are new signatures. I'm gonna go with C tier. Captain Kirk Douglas's signature SG saves the lineup from D tier. It's got the SG custom vibe, but it's a Gibson USA model, so it's not outrageously expensive like the custom shops are. See the Hendrix SG custom, for example, and it's got a super unique control scheme. After the hype and success around the Epiphone prophecies, I was really hoping Gibson would do something to entice younger players, maybe give a signature model to more younger artists, but nah, it's kind of just Gibson as normal. The Mesa Boogie acquisition news got more interest than any Gibson 2021 reveal so far. So yeah, C tier. Then Epiphone. If you watch the channel a lot, you know I'm an Epiphone fanboy. I love Les Pauls, I love affordable guitars, I love how Epiphone caters to the modern player, but I don't think this year's NAM reveals were that exciting. Last year we got the Prophecies and a bunch of new signature model teases, collaboration with the custom shop on the 59 Les Paul. This year we got a new Nancy Wilson signature, Jared James Nichols Gold Glory, and the Slash Collection has been confirmed. It's literally a more affordable version of the Gibson Slash Collection. So solid, but again, nothing with the core lineup. And we're missing models teased at last year's NAM. What happened to Brendan Small's Ghost Horse Explorer? But Matt Hafer revealed his new Origin series on stream at the same time, but separate to NAM. They're Les Paul Customs with Fish and Fluence and a sick access neck heel. So on one hand, the core lineup hasn't changed and we're missing some artist models. But on the other hand, those origins have me more hyped than just about anything else so far this year. They're kind of between an A and B tier for me. I'll round up and go with A tier. Yeah. It. Now Kramer. Uh, there's been no additions to the main lineup. Again, a theme with the Gibson brands this year, but there are three new signature models for Charlie Parrott, Tracy Guns, and Snake Sabo. Um, that's cool. Here's the thing, right? Kramer hasn't been super relevant most of my guitar playing life. And Gibson keeps hinting that they're gonna relaunch, reinvent, reinvigorate 
this brand, Kramer, for the new generation. So I was kind of hoping for some modern facing models, kind of like how BC Rich has done, where they've got the Legacy series that caters to longtime fans who help build their Legacy, and then the Extreme series where they're pulling in the new generation of metal players. And that hasn't happened. Kramer seems more intent with reliving the 80s, which Listen, I'll never sh on fan service. You love to see it. They're just doubling down on the nostalgia that you either vibe with or you don't. It's not really making Kramer a relevant brand again. Like there should be a Kramer prophecy series or equivalent, but there's not. So yeah, I'm gonna give that a D. I was really hoping to see Kramer really can bring it this year. And you know, it's just a couple of new Kramer Kramers for Kramer people. I can already hear the angry Kramer fans typing hate in the comments telling me I don't know shit about yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I get that they have a sick history. I wish they were more relevant in 2021 too. Onto a company I think is a better example of an 80s brand doing a relaunch right. At least in terms of offerings, it is so hard to find any of their guitars anywhere. Let's talk BC Rich. I always thought they were tacky as fuck, but I tried out a Mockingbird Extreme last year, actually really liked it. The quality was awesome, helped that it had a bunch of modern features like Fishman Fluence Moderns and Evertune. Since I've started following the relaunch, they've added fan frets and sub thousand dollar prophecy models for BC Rich fans that still want a classic neck through design, but don't necessarily need all the super high-end features. I'm giving them an A. I think if you're gonna relaunch a guitar company, this is the way to do it. And the amount of new models they're pushing out shows intent. These guys are listening to the fans. They are really going for it. Actually looking forward to trying out more BC Rich this year and I could not be further from a pointy guitar guy. So A tier. Who else do we have left? Ibanez. Ibanez was a solid C tier until they drop the Telecasters that I've been waiting for that Fender refuses to make. Roasted Maple Necks and Fingerboard Stainless Steel Frets. Not cheap, but less expensive than even Fender's American Ultra Lux series. The AZSs bring Ibanez up to B tier for me. PRS, how have we missed PRS? PRS, uh, honestly, not anything super exciting. I think if I wasn't already a fan of PRS guitars, it would be like the Jackson situation. Like, if you're into super pointy guitars or super modern features, there's nothing here for you. Last year we had Mark Holcomb's seven string, for example, or Dusty Waring's CE. Those have the PRS classiness to them, but at the same time have specs and looks that bring in people that wouldn't normally look at PRS. They don't really have anything like that this year, but they have updated the SE carve and the Blue Myers looks super cool with the matching headstock. Could be a tease for a new era for the SEs. I mean, I'm really excited to try them, I'll give it a B. Schechter, as I mentioned, they released a bunch of new series over the course of 2020, and they just updated the Blackjack series, so I'll give that to them. So far, they're teasing two signatures for 2021, what looks to be a white Nick Johnston with a roasted maple fingerboard and a re-release of Kenny Hickey from Type O Negative's green signature. I'll give them a, uh, I don't know, C, because these models aren't super exciting, but I'm hoping having the same owner they'll copy LTD and chuck stainless steel on all their higher-ish models, so C tier on faith alone. Let's go with Court next. Court is interesting because like, Court is a factory house brand, and said factory makes a bunch of other people's stuff. So like, Court doesn't really have an identity. All their modern guitars kind of just seem like Ibanez with a different headstock. I do like the Sunset TC Les Squire guitars, they're not new, they're just not relic anymore. They have the new G300 Pro series, which to be fair, look pretty sick. Roasted Maple, Stainless Steel Frets, Lumen Lays, essentially the AZ Premium series, but 300 bucks-ish less with more limited distribution. Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't even know where you buy court guitars off the top of my head. Eh, I don't know. I'll give them a C. Their lineup is like Ibanez Light. Ernie Ball Music Man. One of my missions this year is to try a Stingray RS in powder blue because it looks great, but their lineup literally had no new models, just new colors, and they discontinued the amazing Fireman's Silver with a roasted maple fingerboard. D. Sterling though, A. Basically because of those cutlass CT50s with roasted maple for four 99. Them and Squire are pushing the rest of the industry into the age of affordable roasted maple. Their distribution isn't as good as Squire, so they're not the massive game changer that Squire is, but aesthetically, they look better than any of the Squires. The only reason they aren't getting S instead of A is because they've only done it to the Cutlass. The Stingray hasn't gotten the same treatment for some reason, so the selection, if you want that spec, is still a bit limited. Solid A tier, though. Moving on to the YouTuber brands, 
Chapman. They've gotten new US distribution, so we finally have them in the States again. For 2021, they have the new standard hybrid series, which has proper Seymour Duncan pickups in them now and the ML1 Hybrid Pros HSS with roasted maple. There's a new seven string signature model for Diego of Lucuna Coil in the design phase. I don't know, man. I was really looking forward to some newly redesigned ML2s, but they are nowhere to be found. You know what? Now that I think about it though, I guess I'll give them a B because now with US distribution, it's like we're getting all the cool stuff from last year too. It's almost like a relaunch of the brand here in the US. Solar, Solar is a weird one. As I said, they just release yeah. all the time. So it's like a constant level of hype. Even if it's something simple, like a new color or now there's bolt-ons, it's like they're always moving, never standing still. I love when I check the website or something pops up on Instagram, it's like, oh, that's new, that's cool. Latest ones I saw were the A1.6 Vinter with Fishman Fluence Moderns and a Black Beauty inspired Solar single cut with a big ass gold Evertune. Solar is just like a constant A tier for me. Even if it's just variations on the same main themes, it's always exciting to pop back in and see what's new. And lastly, Harley Benton. Honestly, I have no idea what new models are actually gonna be released this year. I know which ones I've submitted spec sheets and drawings for. Don't know if they'll actually be produced this year. If they are, I think you guys are gonna love them, but just received official confirmation that my new signature prototypes are in production right now. And the specs are crazy for 499 euro, just like they were last time. So yeah, automatic S tier, obviously, on that alone. Yeah. Okay, we're done with this video anyways. But yeah, that's my list. Given the context of last year, I think any other year, a lot of these wouldn't have ranked as high, or maybe they would. Generally, I'm just excited to try new yeah. <laughs> But overall, the ranking follows a pretty normal distribution. Looking forward to hearing how wrong I am in the comments. I think a key takeaway here, looking at it, is that roasted maple and stainless steel frets are making their way further down the product lines, which is great. At the same time, that's kind of being offset by rising factory production costs. But for now, roasted maple necks reaching the affordable mainstream is incredible. But yeah, those are just my thoughts. This is where I throw it to you. Which brands have you the most excited? Which models are you most interested in? Really curious what your thoughts are coming out of this first virtual only NAM. If you enjoyed this video and the near daily upload schedule around NAM, do me a favor, hit that like button. We're pushing on 100K, so if you haven't already, help your boy out, subscribe, it's free. Social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.